lot's been said about Kevin McGee for not being looked after too well with a lucky strike Suzuki team. Well, Barry Sheen spoke to Didier Derazaga to about the relationship he has with Kevin McGee. Didier, tell us the truth. There's been a lot of talk and wrong reports in the press vis-a-vis -vis McGee, Suzuki, Deradigas. Tell us exactly what the score is. Yeah, I feel a little bit like uh, I give my hand to somebody and he want to take my arm, you know. Um, McGee, uh, I don't know why. I think FIM and the doctors didn't want him to, to ride this year and very late they decided he can ride this year so what, he was too late for Suzuki to organize something. And... Um, so they decided to help him in Japan, he had, uh, he had one bike in Japan and he made the race very well. But after Japan, Suzuki said, he asked again for a bike uh, for Australia. And they said, uh, no, it's impossible, they, they don't have a, a bike. So they said, the only possibility is if DJ is agree, maybe he can ride one of his bikes. So we have talked about it. Uh, and I think, I cannot say I'm very comfortable with it, but I, I felt like if I can help him, it's it's a pleasure for me to, to help in this country and um, I think he deserved it, he beat me in Japan and uh, he has shown everybody that he was a very good rider so if I can help, I decide to help Well there it goes, Nick Harris to the Aradega is just explaining that's the man he's talking about, Kevin McGee and I know that, you know, we're, our heart's out with this man it's one of the great sporting comebacks in sport that McGee has come back the way he has but really Didier has been getting criticised for something that probably has you know, got nothing to do with him really he's just I trying to do the right thing well Kevin, I mean it's hard enough to miss a season and you've had to miss a session while Didier picked the bike that he wanted I mean how do you feel about all of that? Yeah, it's, it's um, pretty bloody hard when you've got a bunch of guys out there who have got a season on you and they've also got the first session on you. I've only done about 70 odd laps around here on the 500 in January testing and uh, I waited till everybody else went um, then went out in the space behind so you know I wasn't getting in guys way and things because I was obviously going to be pretty slow being that green. It, it's not an easy task, it's the first time I've ridden the 91 bike, I have not ridden one in any of the testing. So. Much different? Yeah, it's a, it's a new bike, you know, it, it feels like driving a car that's done uh, 200,000 k's compared to one that's new. So far, he has been faster than uh, Didier Deradegaze, he beat Didier Deradegaze in Japan last week, he's doing the best he can, and he's doing a great job. Kevin McGee, I really, I've said it three or four times, but I, I can't believe the courage this man's shown. No, it's tremendous, he's currently lying 10th in practice, a speed trap figure of 277. He looked really on the way for a great Grand Prix career before that crash at Laguna Seca nearly a year ago. Uh, 28 years old, that first Grand Prix was in 1987, the Japanese Grand Prix. I remember his first Grand Prix win so well, 1988, in Spain at Harama. That was his only Grand Prix win. Uh, 21st in the championship last year, obviously, because he missed nearly all the season following the accident. You're so right, Darren, he really is riding on a great wave of emotion, and uh, everybody wishes him well. Everybody's so happy, I think. Even last year at Phillip Island when he turned up and saw everybody from the Grand Prix circuit, everybody was so pleased to see him. He's a very popular man, a very good rider indeed, and I think everybody's got their fingers crossed that something will come up for him during the season.